Hello, welcome to my channel. Today I am going to show you how I make notebooks inserts for my traveller's notebook. Oops, excuse me, just they look like this. Okay. Um, I use Tom River paper and I use the sewing method to sew it all in and I'm gonna show you how I do it. Okay? First off, I use a bit of card. This is cheap, 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 cheerful card. I paid a pound for 15 sheets from the works here in the UK. And this is 220 GSM. I hope you can read upside down. Card. Alright? It's not even white. It's just it's like an off-white. It's like, like unbleached kind of stuff. One side is a bit um like it's not shiny, but um as if it's been coated or something. Okay, so there you go. A bit hard. So you can see that bit's a bit shinier than that side. Alright, that's your cover. Okay, that's what I used here. And all I did on this was I got some gelatos and I created a space it and then I embossed it and all that lot. Easy as that. Alright, so you start off with your white bit of card. Now, I would show you how to score it and do all that, but I have a mini scoreboard and it doesn't actually have an indent for a five size. I just tried it and ruined a piece of cardboard. <laughs> so, you're gonna, I'm going to have to fold mine without a score, which is fine, that's okay. Um, if I could be bothered, I would measure it all and just score it on my mat, but I can't really be bothered. So, just line it all up. And there you go, easy as that. Get yourself a bone folder. You don't want a majorly, majorly sharp crease, okay? It's card for a start. Um, just enough so that you know where the fold is and where it's gonna go. All right, so there you go. There's your bit of card, all done. Put it aside. Now, you're also going to need your innards. Let me just. And then, best uh, Blue Peter fashion, if you're here in the UK, you'll understand that one. Here's some I prepared earlier. Now, traditionally, a bujo uses dot grid. Um, some people like the um, the little graph paper, the, like in the Hobonichis that, that they have. Um, I like dot grid and I use dot grid on this. Hang on and I will just adjust the focus for you. So you should hopefully be able to see it if you, my camera is gonna play. So there you go, I have a little dot grid. Um, this is a file that was sent to me. I print it out myself. There's a plain bit in the middle there, which is where the fold will go. Okay, and it's exactly the same on both sides of the paper. Okay, as I said, this is Tomway River paper, so it is very, very thin. Okay, I love it personally. I really do. I understand what all the fuss about Hobonichi's is. I screwed up the printing a wee bit on this one, so I'm going to make this my outside sheet, my first sheet, because I don't tend to write on that, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so all you do is you prep your um, paper by folding it like so okay give it a quick swizz and up there's so sheet number one is ready okay continue on and do all of it when i um Really messed that one up. You might sort of be wondering, well, how much paper do I know how to use? Well, that it really does come down to personal preference. I like to have a book each month, so um, I go through and work out exactly what I'm looking at. And um, when you're done, just stick them inside one another, like so. So I like a double spread for my calendar. Yeah. I like um, a double spread for trackers and things like that. Look, I'll show you. 
so this is my June one okay this is June again this is the same cover I stuck some washi there and I just used a black pen so I use a double spread here I stuck this bit of paper down to the card okay I didn't write on the card I just stuck the first sheet down which I might do with this one I don't know I haven't decided yet so use a double sheet there double sheet for my weather double sheet for my tracker and for all the things that I want to track yeah, I will work out how many I need okay I did actually write it all down on a piece of paper but I've promptly lost that then I work out I do a double spread for each week so I work out how many I consider this one page yeah so I work out how many pages I need for all of them then I have my dailies and I do one page per day okay so then I add up all of these pages. So for example, in June, there was 30, okay? Because there's 30 days in June. Then for each week, it was two pages, all right? Now, the first week, I actually added in the two extra days. So I don't need to count that one, but I've got four weeks. So you've got week one, week two, week three, Right, week one, week two, seventeenth. I missed out one. <laughs> and that one. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, then I count nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, and I work out how many double pages I need okay and my brain tends to fry on me so I do it that like I said that first one that first page won't count so I will have my calendar all right I'll fold it all and then I will go through it and show you I triple check all of it because the amount of times I've done it and screwed it up and the last thing you want is to make it all merrily go working through it then find out you haven't got enough pages at the end of the month I find the easiest way to fold it is to bring the edges towards me line them up Hold it and then run my finger to the Mom, middle. Please can and then open. You can open it. I told you how to yesterday. Remember? So yeah, match up all the way along. It's worth taking your time over this. This is a book that you are going to use, you know, for a month. And then, you know, if you're like me, you want to keep hold of it because it'll hold memories and important <laughs> so match up your edges hold it in place run your finger up and then run each way and it shouldn't go down wonky occasionally it will well you can just refold it if it's awful you know it's easier to do this on thinner paper I find than it is on thicker paper and Tom Ray River paper is so forgiving I did actually on one of my books I think I was folding several sheets at a time because it is it is that thin so for example I've got what three sheets here all you have to do is just make sure it's all straight fold it over like so and then do it that way I prefer to do it a sheet at a time because then if anything does go wrong I've only got to deal with one sheet and you don't need to press hard with one of these Literally just glide over and it's done. Inside, if you press too hard, you are at risk of um, damaging your paper. So just make a rough crease and then gently over the top. Now, some people are all about, you yeah, know, keep them in the order and blah 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 blah. I don't do that and I'll show you why in a bit right 
So there you go, it's all folded. Grab all your bits and bobs together and then just stack them one inside the other. And this was the one that I already put one inside the other. So there you go, put it all together. Yeah, the damage there was a printing mishap and it was my fault because I loaded the paper incorrectly. Okay, now you'll notice that it's sticking out a little bit here, which again is why I don't um, fold multiple sheets together. Hang on, I'm just going to bring that in, folks. So you can see, like, they stick out, but that's fine because we're going to fix that in a minute. Okay, so once you've got it all together, you then need to work out do you have enough sheets? Okay, now I know. You know how I'm going to set next month up, and I'm going to use May. Yeah. So I need that double spread for my calendar. Then I need another one for my weather. Then I need that one for my tracker. Two more words. Yes, darling. Then I need that one for my card of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Then I need that one for my about me and my moods. Then I need that one for sleep and steps. Then that one for my chores list. Mom, you do this one, then I do the other one. Not right now. I'm adding in one for gratitude, which is that one. Now I want to get into my weeklies. So what I do there is I go to my yearly calendar and see one, two, three, four plus three days. I'm about to do it. I think I could possibly uh, fit that I can't in. Do it again. Hold it there at the top. It and pull. It's because you're squeezing it, that's why. Yeah. So I will go week one, week two, week three, week four. And what I'm also going to do, because there are three extra days, which might be a bit hectic, I'm going to give myself a half sheet. Okay, now I need to count whether I've got enough pages for my dailies. I like to do enough and then maybe a wee bit more. So I'm going to count through from here and check that I've got enough. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, 28, 29, 30, 31. And then I've got a double spread at the back which I can use for anything, okay? It could be if I have something that I particularly want to journal and takes more than one page, if I want to keep notes in here, all that lot, okay? So there you go. I've got enough pages. Here's my cover. See, I mean, I could put it in that way and then chances are I'm not even gonna ever get to that, so I will put that at the back. So put it inside your cover. And it fits, okay? More or less, it fits, okay? Still not worrying about these bits yet. Don't worry about them. Right, now, how do we fix it all together? Bear with me. <laughs> yeah, this is me not prepared. I'm never prepared. So, you need thread. Regular old normal thread and a needle. Okay, you can use any size needle you like. <laughs> Some people like a slightly large needle, some people like a slightly smaller needle. It really, really doesn't matter. Paper's very forgiving, okay? I personally like a slightly smaller needle, like this one. You can see I've used it before. So I'm gonna pull that one out. That's the needle I use, okay? And then what you do is you pull yourself some thread. I'm, I'm never 100% sure how much to pull, so I just pull a load off. 
because I figure I can always use it you know, again. I used to be able to do that with no trouble whatsoever. And then I got new glasses and now I'm... You know, have them on. Nothing. Right. Double your thread. <laughs> That's why I say you need to pull a lot because now this doesn't look like I've got enough. I think I've got enough. I can never remember. Create a stencil. Okay, this is what I did. Um, I've got five holes in my stencil. Okay, you can't see them very well. Um, but the idea was is that I stuck one in the middle and then I did two either side of the middle at an equal distance. I think it's something like just over an inch on each one. Okay. I find creating a stencil invaluable, absolutely invaluable. I really, really recommend it. So with said stencil, find the middle of your book, which is there, and stick it all together, okay? So your stencil is there in the middle. You don't need your needle and thread just yet. Now, you need a pokey tool. That's a technical term. Okay, you can buy these on eBay for like a pound. Okay, it's just a sharp, you can get them in craft shops, sewing shops, anything like that. They're for making holes. Right, that's, that's, that's its purpose in life. Pokey tool, poke things with it. So you've got your stencil inside your book okay all lined up all in place now if you don't trust yourself get some clips to hold it in place all right then what you do is you find your first hole the middle one's usually the best one i fold my book as i do this because i help find it helps push it right into the spine and then you push all the way through until you see your pokey tool sticking out all right Give it a good old push it right through all right the holes will all sort of close down a little bit do each hole Ugh, like so mind your fingers while you do it your fingers don't need holes in them by all means put holes all over your body but you know your fingers don't tend to work too well if they've got holes in them and they're bleeding everywhere you can put a piece of foam underneath and do it that way if that's easier for you. I just I just do it this way. Now, this is vitally, 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 vitally important. Remove your stencil. Otherwise, you're going to sew your stencil in place and you don't want that. Now, grab your needle and your thread. Yeah, ask me how many times I've sewed my stencil into the middle of a TM book. Go through your middle one. Don't pull it all the way through, leave yourself a tail, okay? Come back in the next way, it doesn't matter which way you go, it really doesn't matter. All right, I'm gonna go this way because I've got hold of it. Come back in, make sure you've come all the way through all your pages, okay? Pull it nice and tight. Check that you've not got any sticky up loopy bits, all right? It's going to be a little bit loose because I've not got this side secured. And then go out through the next hole. I know you're going to be wondering now what the hell do I do? I've run out of holes. You can go back the other way, all right? So you're going to go back. You've come out of this hole and you're going to go back through the next hole. Which you came through just now. Like so. little tug to help tighten it up all right constantly check to make sure that you're tight that's my loose one with my tail on it that's absolutely fine do not worry about that now you're going back out of that center hole like you did first time around a bit 
helps hold the tails out of the way as you do this. Pull in the direction that you are sewing. Okay, so you say, I'm sewing this way. So pull your thread that way. Don't pull it like that because you're going to rip your pages and you're going to rip your card. All right, thread will rip through it. So pull in the direction you're going. Now, go in the next hole. This is where you find out your holes have started to close up. Give it a little wiggle and you'll get through. Okay, so don't pull that way. Pull in the direction you are sewing. Okay, and then go back out there. Now, again, give it a little tug in the direction you're going. See, I've got a loop there where I've not pulled it through. I've not pulled it through very tightly. So, just check your threads and give each, both of them a little, a little pull. There you go. Just to pull them down. Again, that one is just my thing. Okay. So give them a nice little pull in that direction. All right. Away from the direction you're sewing in. Now you've got to go back again to take you back to the middle, okay? So, you go into the next hole down. Now, I'm gonna hold the needle in this hand. And as I pull it, I'm just gonna give that another little tug in that direction, just to help the tension. But this hand, is pulling this way okay now saw this trick the other day you thread underneath that first saddle stitch to complete your line and then just tie your tails together okay Now before you double tie it, check that everything is nice and tight. And it is, okay? So do your double bow, your double knot after that, double bow. Oops. My hands are a bit dry, so I'm having trouble getting hold of it. Okay, and just tie it off. And Bob's your uncle. And then just cut. Right, they're small. You're not going to see them. Once this is in your your notebook, you are not going to see that tiny, 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 tiny little set of tails. Now, oh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get my focus to work. Now that's a uh, five mil dot grid. Okay. Come on, focus. Play with me. And that's how much of a little set of tails I've just left myself. Okay, so there you can see the stitching going up the up the centre. Okay, and that's it on the back. Nice and easy, easy as that. And that's it. That that is it. That is now finished, done. Okay, but what about my sticky out pages? I can hear you screaming. Well, you can leave them. Some people choose to. Some people are like, no, I want flat edges. Now, if you are one of the flat edge crew, the first question you need to ask yourself is, do I trust myself with a sharp knife? Because, put your stencil away. Because, you are gonna need to use a sharp knife to fix this. You also need a metal ruler. Burnish everything down a bit. Okay. Now, line up your ruler with the edge of your cover. Okay. You shouldn't be able to see your cover. Now, 
you're going to need a knife, a craft knife of some kind. I have a retractable work one. Okay. This is where it gets a little bit fiddly. You need to keep this hand still and you need to press down. This hand with the knife, okay, you gently run your knife down the length of the ruler. You do not need to press hard, okay? If your knife is sharp, and it should be for doing something like this, it will cut through the paper as you go. So you can see it's starting to do it. All right, you just need to be gently, be gentle and even. And quite frankly, if you press too hard, you are actually in danger of compromising it because it will like all gunge up on you. And you might also cut it unevenly. So as you go in, you know, check and pull away these bits. I'm not pressing hard enough at the top, and so I keep missing. I usually stand up to do this because then I find I'm pressing that much more evenly. But I'm not putting that much pressure on. I'm literally just. There we go, I've done that bit. This is the top bit I've got to do. Do not move your ruler until you are a hundred percent sure. Got like a little nub there. Hundred percent sure that you have done it. Okay. If you're not hundred percent happy with it and you've moved your ruler, you ain't never getting that back in the same place. Okay. Once you're happy, put your knife away. Move your ruler. And hopefully you've got a nice clean edge. Okay, now. But it's got square corners, I hear you cry. Yeah, it has. So you need a corner rounder. Now, I didn't get on with mine, but I do recommend the we are memory keepers chomper thing okay the, the big one that it looks like looks like this but with a different top okay i didn't get on with mine because it never cut and i couldn't ever figure out why and then i, ch I chucked the bloody thing away and then realized that actually i needed it because it was better at cutting multiple pages than my little itty bitty we are memory keepers one so I will have to buy another one. It's called a corner chomper, I believe. Now, dependent on what kind of corners you like is dependent on where you cut it. This one does three different sizes. So I'm going to show you. Right. So you've got four millimetres, which is that one. Seven millimetres, which is that one or 10 millimeters which is that one okay so you've got four seven and ten I like ten so this is a little bit tedious but you have I have I personally have to do this and say because I can't fit them all under here this will only take a couple of sheets at a time so make sure you are on the correct one get it right in there and chomp. Ta da! Yes, I have to go through the entire book to do this. Thankfully, because it's Tom Ray River paper, I can get away with doing it about five sheets at a time. Try, when you do this, try not to curve your pages too much. Alright. Because it can um, ruin how your pages are lying, sort of thing. I did about a quarter of the book there, so 
a corner chomper should be able to take care of this in pretty much one go. I think I just got a defective one. Okay, so there I am at the middle of the book already. The other reason I would recommend a corner chomper is, I mean, mine's perfectly neat and serviceable, but I like a little dip here because um, it just holds better in the strings if there's a little chunk taken out here and my book won't fit in here at least I don't think it will I can try it but yeah see mine won't fit in there so I could have felt I could have done it beforehand I always forget so yeah a corner chomper would take care of that your other option is to try it with a blade if you're brave enough I don't know that I am <laughs> um, what I would if you want to do it I would recommend getting a coin um, oh sorry I'm covered in tiny tiny little bits of paper <laughs> get a coin hold the coin in place and go around the coin okay that's if, if you want to do it so I would get um, don't have a coin to hand and I'm not going to use this but I'm just going to show you what I mean so grab your coin get up to the corner with it like so and then do it the same way you did your edges just gently keep going round and round and round and round until you've done it all okay it's not as perfect as using like a corner chomper but if you don't have a corner chomper and they're not cheap then you know they're 20 or good to buy if you don't have one that's probably your next best thing. Now, I didn't do that section of my book with these notebooks, um, and I haven't done it really since I got back into using this properly. My book has coped reasonably okay. There's been a little bit of tearing, but then that I've, I've chucked a lot in here, you know. Um, it's held up quite well. I don't know where the middle is. Yeah, where the elastic is, there we go so there we go I mean it's held up quite it's worn a little bit you know but would it wear if I chop the corner I put more than likely more than likely um, your other option to take out the centre bit which I literally has just come to me is um, if you've got a circle punch you could maybe try it and open it up in the middle I don't know whether this would cope with it any better and then you could put it in there I don't know whether I'll be able to do it with it this is just a cheap Aliexpress one so oh yeah it will do so you could try it that way but you'd have to be pretty sure on whether that is the size that you want You know what in the interest of science i'm gonna try it let's see if this works or if i'm just gonna fuck up a notebook now i don't have a middle section but i do have one to line it up with the spine so i'm just gonna to have to I know some of them have got like a little line in them don't they my one doesn't right i've taken the little window off to show you guys i've got a line there which i can line up with the spine of my book I do not have a halfway line so gently insert this is nerve-wracking as hell I hope you lot appreciate this get it as lined up as possible but... oh, I can't do it ain't gonna happen there is no way in hell I can do that but like I said it's a cheap Aliexpress punch so let's try it the other way might just be it doesn't like the um, cardboard come on Yeah, see, if you had like a decent punch, you might be able to do this. I don't, so yeah, <laughs> it's not 
doing fuck all for me, but then it is just a... a do you know what? I don't even know if it works, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, yeah, it does, apparently. I'm busy, Daryl. But that's another option you could try, okay, if you don't have a corner jumper. I'm glad I thought of that. I might buy a decent circle punch because I would use a circle punch more than I would use a corner jumper. I think, she says. I might try the coin trick. The trouble is in England, a lot of our coins are now um, not round, which makes life a bit harder. Of course, the other thing you could do if you 100% trusted yourself is cut it with a pair of scissors if you've got scissors strong enough. So I found here a 10p and a 1p, UK currency. 10p is a bit wide. It won't match if you get what I mean. But the 1p is perfect. So that was actually gonna cut it the wrong way anyway, that um, circle punch. So you would have to hold it like so. I don't know if I can do this. not perfect okay it really isn't but you've now got that little dip you can always tidy it up with scissors all right if you're a bit like oh well you know that's a bit it looks a bit rough there yeah well it's gonna you know fucking hell, you, you used a coin not a not a rounder a little trick. so there you go it does it it works with a coin in the interest of science i tried it for you I would recommend doing your spine at the point furthest from you because you might find it a little bit easier to um, do. So you want to line up your sides like so. Just take your time. Follow the coin around. You know what? I think the more you do that, the easier you're going to find it. So how does it fit in? Well, excuse the noises. My son's watching um, Big Hero 6. Or Hero Big 6, as he calls it, because he loves it. Oh my word, what a mess. Yes, that's the only thing. It makes a lot of mess little bits no you don't have to round everything off you can leave it all if you're the kind of person that likes square corners and all that lot that's fine i don't <laughs> so go to the back of your notebook find a string like so open your notebook in the middle where your two hickeys are and then just feed your book through your string. Now look how nice that sits because I've rounded the corners. I'm so tempted to actually try that on my other books. And I would do it if it wasn't for the fact that I've stuck things in quite close to the top. Like um, on this one. And it would be hard on this one to stick tape like I've stuck a receipt in at the top. That might be the only thing though. But I've got cellar tape holding this thing together. And I've got washi across the top. That is the only thing. If like me you like to decorate across the top and the bottom you're gonna to have to trim your washi, okay? That's the only thing you need to be careful of because I just go straight across with my washi. So it'll be interesting to see how I cope now that I've taken this corner out. But you wanna see how it sits, there you go. It sits in there nice and neatly. Let me lift it up so you guys can see. Uh, zoomy zoom, focusy focus. There you go. So as you can see, the little dip here, just it just sits that little bit more neatly than it does, say, in 
this one was the middle. And maybe I'm not showing you in that one because that's got a private set of pictures in there. So let's show you in the other Tomway one. And I can find the blue middle. As you can see on this one, it started to like pull on it a little bit and it's dented the top. Now, hopefully it won't do that in the book that we've just made because you've got your wee dip and it will be less stressful on it. Okay, I hope you found this helpful. Um, I hope, you know, I hope you've now got a pretty book to show for it. Um, if you have any questions, please, please feel free to leave them down below. And if I can answer them, I will do my very best. I've put this in upside down. Look, I've put my crappy bit of paper there. So all you need to do is just whip it out and turn it around. And then my crappy bit, where I have my printing mishap, is at the back. There you go. It fits in much nicer, I will admit, than my other ones do. But um, there you go. And that's what it looks like when it's full of books, basically. So yeah, I really hope you found this helpful. Um, I appreciate you spending some time with me today. It's, this turned out a bit longer than I was expecting it to, but there you go. So yeah, your basic tools is a knife. Hey, maybe even a 10p piece. I'm gonna put that away. Needle and thread, your paper, and a bit of scissors just for tidying up, and a corner rounder if, if you're so inclined, okay? Um, you could round your corners the same way we've just done the spine. Just saying, okay, you don't necessarily need a corner rounder. You can do it all with a coin and a scalpel blade. All right, or a craft blade or, you know, whatever the hell they call these bloody things. Um, I like this one because it folds away. Um, that's it, okay, and your paper. All right, that's it. Um, any questions, leave them down below. I'll do my best to answer If I can't answer them, I'm pretty sure I know somebody who can, okay? Please feel free to give this video a thumbs up. It was an adventure, we tried it, you know? I might make another one um, with all the, yes, I've done this and this is how it's, <laughs> rather than a, hmm, I wonder what happens if I try it this way. <laughs> but yeah, you know, hey, leave me a thumbs up. It was a giggle. Uh, any comments, questions, anything like that, leave them down below. If you click the book over here in the corner, you'll be subscribed. And if you hit that bell, which should appear down there, if YouTube's playing nice, you'll be notified when I upload new content. They're mostly bullet journaling kind of things and the occasional haul review if I go shopping, which isn't that often. And then, you know, if people send me stuff, I review all that too. Thank you so, 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 so much for joining me today. I hope you have a fantastic afternoon and I will see you next time. Bye.